Hello everyone, I'm Pierre Nicolas, CTO and co-founder at Pixelia, and today we're going to talk about YOLO algorithms. For those who don't know what YOLO is, it's one of the most famous object detection algorithms that has been achieving state-of-the-art results for a few years now. The goal of this short video is to teach you how to train a YOLO V5 easily, but first we will quickly explain the theory, starting with the evolution of object detectors over time, what really is YOLO and how it's different from other object detectors, how it performs, YOLO v5 in depth, and finally how to train YOLO v5 on your own custom dataset. Let's go! There are a few types of object detectors, RCNNs and SSDs. RCNN or Region Convolutional Neural Network are older and are an example of two stages detectors. The two stages are a selective search that proposes region, so bonding boxes, that might contain objects, and a CNN used to classify this region. As you can see in this figure, the two steps are done sequentially, which can take a lot of time. The problem is that this first implementation of RCNN in 2013 was really slow. This left a lot of room for improvement, and that's what have been achieved with fast RCNN, in 2015, and later faster RCNN that replaces the selective search stage with an RPN, Region Proposal Network, which finally made RCNN an end-to-end -end deep learning object detector. This family of detectors are usually very accurate, but still very slow. So researchers came up with a different architecture called single-shot detectors, which YOLO is part of. What makes those algorithms fast is that they simultaneously learn the object's coordinates but also the corresponding classes. The counterpart is that they will be less accurate than RCNN, but really much faster. That's the philosophy behind YOLO and the many iterations it has known over the years. Today, we are going to focus on the last one to date, YOLO v5. As you can see in these graphics, it really performs well, even against efficient debt, which is exponentially slower as you choose a higher version of it. As we can see, there is multiple versions of YOLO v5 itself. It goes from small to extra large, with obvious differences in weight, performances, and latency. This is a good thing, because we can choose a version that is either very fast, but less accurate, two versions that are good compromises between latency and precision, and a heavier version that will perform better. Now that we know more about YOLO and the main differences with other algorithms, let's train it. Welcome to Pixelia. For the record, Pixelia is an end-to-end -end AI development platform that allows you to create and version datasets, annotate your data, organize your work with projects, track all your experiments, save your files, and finally deploy your models all in the same place. I'll start by showing you the dataset that we will use for our tutorial. So this is dataset for object detection. As you can see, it is already fully annotated with five different classes, which are different types of grapes. Let's take a look at the annotations. We can clearly see that the dataset is well annotated with every grape inside bonding boxes, just like this. Now, for the sake of simplicity, I don't want to create a model that can detect those five classes, but rather an object detector that can detect grapes. So what I want to do is to merge those five classes into one class that would be called grape and create a new dataset version with it. First, I'm going to select all my images, just like this and create a new datasheet version with no labels. Here I can see that I have two versions of my dataset now. Let's choose our newest version. Now I'm going to set up the labels, so the only one class we want is grape. Okay, fine. So now our label is well defined. What we're going to do now is to import the annotation from our old dataset into this one and merge the labels, just like this. I'm going to select the output label. I'm going to put all the old label in this one, merge into grape, execute. Now I just have to wait until the merge is finished. OK, now we can clearly see that we only have one label with 3920 objects. If we take a look at the annotations, 
we can see that our bundling boxes with all the different types of grapes are now only one type, which is grape. And we do have all our objects here or here. Let's get down to the real business and train a YOLO V5 on this dataset. What I'm going to do is to create a project called YOLO Grade Test that will use this dataset and organize my trainings. Okay, I don't have a team. All right, let's check our project. So our project is pretty empty now. What we're gonna do is to attach the data set we just uh, created in this project. So this is the one and we want the grape one version. Here it is. Our data set is now well attached. Before creating our experiment, I will show you the model section of Pixelia. On this page, you can find every model that we uploaded that are base architecture that you can use to kickstart your experiment, such as YOLO v5, efficient debt, faster or CNN, or whatsoever. So for our experiment, I'm going to use a YOLO v5 M model for the sake of speed of training, okay? What you have to understand is that you can use this model out of the box. It means that you don't have to do anything, just select them. This is what we're going to do now. So I'm going back to my project and I'm going to create an experiment using this pre-trained YOLO V5M model. As this is the first version of our training, I'm going to call it V1. And I'm going to choose the model from my organization model hub. So as I said, we're going to choose a YOLO V5M. So this is this one. Okay. To run YOLO V5M, we just have to set up two parameters, the number of steps or epochs and the batch size. So for this tutorial and to show you quickly how it goes, we just we will just set up a hundred of epochs. So the parameter step will be hundred. Uh, we will run it in a uh, collab. So I'm going to set up a small batch size. Okay, it will be uh, one just for the test. And we will run on large hardware later. And I can select the data set. So our famous grape one data set to set up the experiment. Okay, let's create it. Now, this is the experiment overview. This is the dashboard of your experiment. So as you can see, uh, we do have our base model. Here it is. We have attached our data set and our parameters are set up. Now, the beauty of Pixelia is that I can just go in the launch tab, click here. Okay, this is a pre-configured Jupyter notebook with all the things needed to train a YOLO V5. So I'm gonna quickly show you all the steps needed to launch the training. So first, we have to install the Pixelia package along with the Pixelia YOLO v5 package. We have packaged in this library the whole PyTorch implementation of YOLO v5. Um, so we just have to import uh, the packages along with uh, PyTorch or process. This is our experiment name, v1. So we have to leverage the experiment system of Pixelia to get all the files uh, we have uh, from our pre-trained network and the parameters. So with the checkout, we can we can get everything on the instance, download the annotation along with the images. We set up a directory uh, that will store our images and annotation. Uh, this is the train test split. Okay. So we have to generate a YAML that will contain the label map along with uh, the directory, the path of the train and test images. So this is what is done on this and these lines. Then we have to set up the hyperparameters that will be used for training. So the only things we have to give is uh, the parameters we set up from Pixelia, the label map and the experiment name. And then we can launch the train loop. I already launched it in order to show you something because it's quite slow on a Jupyter CPU notebook. But as you can see, the training is going pretty well actually. And everything is sent back to Pixelia live, just like this. As you can see, I already have my training metrics in live. And if I refresh the page, I should have some more values with the new epochs. Perfect. Now, as it would be too long to wait for the training to finish, 
uh, and to show you real result with a uh, longer training I set up another experiment that I will show you here that has a thousand epochs uh, and has trained on uh, NVIDIA V100 GPUs so as you can see the metrics are pretty good uh, we do have problem with our loss here we should investigate it later but as we can see it does uh, converge a little bit now let's see result with evaluation on real images from our data set so what I did is that I log the uh, images from my evaluation on different batches of images so we can see better I downloaded one of those images and here it is what we can see is that with just a thousand epochs of training which took approximately four hours we do have already some great results uh, for our grape detection algorithm if we go check the files of our experiment we can see that we have successfully uploaded all the files needed to resume our training later we do need the config file so this is the this is the yaml a checkpoint file for hyperparameters this is this one and another checkpoint file which are the uh, pytorch weights so now we can resume our training whenever we want and iterate over and over on our experiments easily using Pixelia. That was Pierre Nicola for Pixelia. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to register to Pixelia if you too want to accelerate your deep learning project. If you like this content, you can subscribe to our YouTube channels and go check our medium articles to always learn more about how we can experiment faster using Pixelia. See you next time.